in the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts and minds, be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The second chapter of the book of Philippians has what is known in verses, I believe it's 6, 6 through 9, or 11, as what is called the Christ hymn, or one of the early psalms that the church itself used as something that they would sing during worship. So this is poetry, actually, that Paul borrowed himself. It's not language that Paul himself wrote or made up. It's something that he knew, that early Christians knew, and, and everybody used. This part about Christ emptying himself um, and taking on the form of a slave and, and going to death, even death on a cross. Um, so God lifted him up and gave him the name above every name. That's a hymn that early Christians would have sung in worship. So this morning we have this text that, that bases itself around this hymn, right? Shows us, Clyde, that singing is very important, right? Yes, Clyde, Clyde, so okay. If Clyde hasn't asked you if you sing yet, he will. <laughs> and if you tell him no, he'll still ask you again next week. Because we truly believe that music has power to do things. And even the words to songs sometimes are enough to move us, to get us to understand something. There's some interesting things in this text this morning that we got to look at. I have a page of notes here that we're going to go over, so I promise I won't keep you from Mother's Day brunch. Okay? All right. This first verse was read very eloquently for us, and it said, If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy. Right? That's what it says, those of you that are following along in your bulletin. And what, would you believe me if I told you that's not a good translation? Have I said this before? There's actually some words missing here, right? And it's actually even beyond that a bad translation. It should actually read, If then there is any encouragement in Christ, if any consolation from love, if any sharing in the Spirit, if any compassion and sympathy. The English tried to simplify it and take that little word out, that if word um, that, we, that was put in there repeatedly by Paul. It was put in there for a reason. How many of you remember what the word A means, right? I told you this back a long time ago in here. The Greek word A, it's two words. It's the letter E and the letter I. And it means if, but it also means something else. See, it's the word that's used by the gospel writers when Jesus is dragged out into the wilderness and he meets Satan. And Satan comes to him and he says, if you are the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. Or if you are the Son of God, throw yourself off the pinnacle of the temple because God has commanded that he'll take your angels so that you won't touch the ground. And if you'll only worship me, and he says, he doesn't say if there, he says, if you'll worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of heaven. But he says, if you are the Son of God, turn these stones to bread. Or if you are the Son of God, throw yourself off the pinnacle of the temple. Right? It's that same word. That word means if. But Paul's not asking a question here. And Satan was not asking Jesus a question. See, the word A, those two little letters in Greek, E and I together, make the word if, but they also mean the word since. See, Satan wasn't questioning whether or not Jesus was the Son of God. He was saying, since you're the Son of God, you can make these stones become bread. You don't have to be hungry. And since you are the Son of God, when you throw yourself off the pinnacle of the temple, you're not going to hit the ground because he's already said that he's going to take care of you and he's going to send his angels to come and pick you up. Paul's not asking the Philippians if there is any encouragement. He's not asking them if there's consolation from love. He's not asking them if they're sharing the Spirit. He's not asking them if there's compassion and sympathy. He's saying to them, since... You already do all of these things since you already encourage each other in Christ, since you already live together in love and compassion, since you already share everything together, then make my joy complete. Right? That's verse 2. Make my joy complete. Be of one like mind in Christ Jesus. One like mind. Does that mean we all think and believe the exact same things? Does that mean we all think and believe the exact same things? No. No, it doesn't. It means that we're of one like mind, of like Christ. And we believe what Christ has taught us, that all life and all people are worthy of being loved by Him. And that everything that was created was created by who? 
God, and everything that God created is good. So therefore, everything is good until we take it to the point that it's not. Right? That's where the human sin comes in. But everybody is a child or can be a child of God. And because of that, we need to encourage each other and love each other and share with each other and help each other see who Christ is. Right? Because it gets down here to the very end, then it gets to the, I'm going to skip over the Christ hymn, but it gets to verses 11 and, or 12 and 13. And Paul talks about this one line in there that makes every Lutheran cringe. And I don't know if any of you did, but every time I read this passage, I just get a little shiver up my spine. Right? Because Paul says down here at the end, Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always loved and obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more, and now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. See, I read that and, I, and the Lutheran in me goes, why do I have to work on my salvation? Right? Because as Lutherans, we believe what the author of Ephesians said in, verse, in chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, right? For I am saved by grace through faith, not of my own works, so that I can boast about it. But now here Paul says that I have 